for those that were not at the Smarter Roofer conference uh, that missed Chuck's powerful session there. Uh, so Chuck was the youngest aerospace engineer at 19 years old at one point. He then ended up in sales, taking Bath Fitter all the way to a $2 billion company, and then taking Able Roofing, Mr. Roof, from $60 million to $200 million in sales in just four years. And today, Chuck is coming back for a deep dive, for a follow-up into sales. What I love most about Chuck, he brings the passion, he brings the energy, and I really appreciate that. You know, his passion is to help sales reps to unlock that potential, and we all carry that potential within us. Sometimes we just need a little bit of help to get it unlocked, and I believe Chuck brings that to the table. So I'd like to welcome you to today's Deep Dive session, Chuck Toki. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, the, the event was a lot of fun. We have gotten a lot of messages. We have had countless amounts of Zoom meetings from people at the event. Many have become clients of Top Rep, so I do thank you for that. That is fantastic. And we've also kind of pushed a lot of networking as some people really wanted to dive into more of the codings or into some of these others where, you know, maybe there's somebody else in the industry that can help them out. And one of my favorite things to do is just link people together. Yeah, you know, it's one thing for me to teach you, but if there's somebody else that knows it better than me, I'm definitely going to to give you access to that person. You know, and we always get their their blessing before we we uh, we do this, but it has been absolutely amazing. Appreciate that. Yeah, I think sometimes I'm not sure where I should fit into the industry, but I learned this in retail many years ago. People would walk into my store brick and mortar store and they'd ask do you know so and so like where can i get this service where can i buy this product and they were looking for a connection and so over the years i found myself being a connector and so i, I love that you're involved in that as well chuck pointing people in the right direction that's really what it's about so i appreciate that so we're going to dig into some questions towards the end of the the session here will open for Q&A, but we'll also touch on an event that you guys are doing in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll mention that and then we'll open for Q&A towards the end. Before we get into some of the follow up questions from the event, I'd like to ask how important is self awareness in sales? If it's important, how do we get it? How do we get more self awareness? Like how do we grow in this area? Because I think having some self-awareness, being aware of our surroundings, where we lack, where we're good at, and then being aware of what's happening in the in the conversation with a customer and the client. I think that goes a long way. So how important is it? How do we get more of that? So self-awareness is huge. And it kind of goes along the lines of self-limiting beliefs. That is what we find most. When people say, hey, what do you think brings or, or keeps certain organizations small and then other organizations get very big very quick and most of it are self-limiting beliefs where people think that uh, i have to grow at 10 percent per year you can grow as fast as you want it just depends on the sacrifice the amount of money you're willing to spend and the the amount of effort you're willing to put in so you you can be as big or as small as you want to be. That is by far the thing that we see most in these organizations. The companies that we've gone into and have grown very quickly, we we do warn them you can grow too fast, but you can grow as fast as you want. I think one of the case studies that we may have shared at the event was American Weather Techs, and they wanted to grow from from six million, where they have been for five six years since the guy bought it, to he wanted to be over twelve million, and he gave me five years to do it. We did it in six months, you know. And I told him, I says, "Here's the thing I want you to understand." So we're about to get into the Olympics, right? And one thing you may have seen is, and the news picked it up right away, is. The one of the and I can't remember if it was like the 100 yard dash or what it was for the women, but three ladies are going to the Olympics that have never been to the Olympics. They had four ladies in there that have been to the Olympics and didn't make the cut. Here's the thing that people need to understand when it comes to the Olympics is every four years we set world records. Well, do we just get faster? That's what we, I, I've never understood. Did, did we just take a different type of Flintstone vitamin? 
that makes us get faster? No. What happens is somebody sets a new bar and we need to figure out how we're going to get faster than that. Well, if what we did was we realized that that bar is set at, if you're at 5 million, you want to be 10 million. Well, that 10 million is that bar. How do we get past that? Instead of saying, how do I get 10% better? So that's why I'm saying you can get as big as you want, as fast as you want. Just be careful growing too fast. So if you want to grow at 10%, it's easy to do. If you want to grow at 20%, you can, but it's a self-limiting belief that you feel that that's all you can do. You feel that we're going to get 10% better because we're going to give 10% more effort. That's not the case. It's understanding what it is you need to do. Many people get 10% better because they it, it's easier to think of an activity or a new system that'll get them 10% better when all they really need to do is understand how they're going to get to that, that point that they want to be at. You know, if they want to double in size, you know, it's easy to do depending on where you're currently at. We share with a lot of our clients that you can double in size until you hit 10 million. If you, what you're going to do is try to double in size once you hit 10 million, you're going to, your production team's going to quit. It's not that you can't do it. Your production team's going to squeal and quit on you. So once you get to that 10 million, then we look at anywhere between 10, 20, or 30% growth. But what is it that you as a company need to do? And if what you're you're going to tell yourself is we're going to work harder, you're not going anywhere. You know, if you want to go lose weight, hey, I can I can help you lose a pound. And we did our job. But if what you want to do is lose 10 pounds, well. Now we have to put in a plan and make make the the uh, the plan or put the plan in place and and make the effort to uh, to keep that in in place. Many times when we're looking at self limiting beliefs, we look at what are we willing to sacrifice and is that feasible to not only my staff but my family. What what numbers need to be put in place? Then the system that gets put in place. Who needs to be on the team? Many times that is where we fall down is we don't have the right team or we don't have the right players to put that system in place. Do you ever look at your team and say, yeah, you know what? I really like these people, which I'm glad you like them, but will they be the team that gets you to where you want to go. There's a book out there called Who Not How. It helps you to understand who needs to be on your team. My favorite book when it comes to teams, it's by Patrick Lencioni. It's called The Ideal Team Player. Very, very strong. Anything written by Patrick Lencioni, I love. But understanding that the team that you put in place, if you were to start an NBA team, and I don't know much about basketball, but that just kind of comes in my head. If you were to start an NBA team and you went out and got all your friends and family to be on the team and said, all right, I mean, we're, we're going to join the NBA. How far do you think you would go? Not very far. But if you went out and got key players, key starters, you know, the, those folks that close a, a game easily, now you have a team. So take a look at who is on your team. Should they be there? Can they rise to the level that you need them to? And then who else do you need? So when you look at your surroundings coming, you know, full circle back to what you said, Owen, you know, it's the self-limiting beliefs. It's also, like you said, your surroundings being, you know, aware of your surroundings and who's there. I love that. I like how you, well, having the right person on the team, I think like the Olympics, you know, they have the right people, not just the player, but the player has the right people on the team behind the scenes in training and supporting politics works the same way and, you know what was it eight 12 years ago whatever the certain politician had certain people in place they got it done but that team has changed you know they they change out the the team to hit that new bar i love how you mentioned you know figure out where that bar is and put the team in place put the people in place I love that. A follow-up question to that, and I expect I know, probably know your answer, but a lot of us are involved in personal development. Like it, it's a huge deal to us. Leadership, leadership training, things like that. We've heard it for years. My first dive into personal growth development was the seven habits of highly effective leaders mm -hmm. by David Covey. And mm -hmm. listening to that, 
driving down down the back country road with my 1995 Pontiac Grand Prix windows open I had a tape stuck into the tape player in it connected to a CD player that's how I got that audio that's where I was in life at the time and so that's a huge deal but learning sales is sales learning sales being involved in growing and growing and growing in sales is that considered personal development and how you know how does that tie into personal growth it depends on the personal growth you want to have and and you have to have a focus so if you're going to be focused on how i can be a better leader then that's where your focus needs to be you can't say okay i want to get better at leadership and i also want to get better at sales pick one and really focus in on it and then once you master one then go to the other and start to master that. And it doesn't mean that you can't trade off and get better because you're always going to. You should always be a student of sales and a student of leadership. And then when you're looking at leadership, you have to look at this differently. I was speaking next to John Maxwell, and this was probably about three or four years ago, and got a chance to sit down and actually get to know him. And when I brought up the the, the matter of results-based leadership, which I'm writing a book about right now, it's different than if you were to say, I want to be a better leader. Results-based leadership, this is leadership where we're leading a, a group of people that have to succeed daily. It's not just, how can I get people to follow me into, the, the, into conquering the castle? It's, how can we get them to succeed on a goal daily? And when we look at, because a lot of the people that we work with are residential. And so we wake up, we, we think of ourselves as we're broke when we, when we take our head off the pillow. And our job is to put ourselves back in business by the time we go back to bed. And that's daily. It's not, hey, by the end of the week, I hope we're at this level. And it's like, no, what did you do and did you win daily? And if you didn't, then what are you going to do tomorrow to make up for what you couldn't do yesterday? Because if what you're going to try to do is do it weekly, well, now you're, you're really up against a wall here. Most organizations do it monthly. They wait until they figure out, did we win this month? And if not, then I have to make it up next month. That's gargantuan. You're never going to make that happen. That's why we do it daily. And so if what you're, if what you're going to do is focus in on how can I lead my team to win on a daily basis, not weekly, not monthly, but on a daily basis, and that we have a goal on a daily basis. But what is that goal? It's not, when we're looking at commercial, we work with one of the largest commercial sales organizations in the painting industry. And once we started to get into this, you could see everybody on the call start to smile because they're like, that's it. There's the, that's the light bulb that needed to go off is it, it, maybe it's not always a number at the end of the day, but what is our goal today? Our goal today is to make so many contacts. Maybe our goal today is that uh, we're going to close out a certain deal or a certain number of deals that uh, we've been trying to, to finish, or maybe we're trying to get in contact, whatever that is, but that goal has to be completed, I love that whatever that might based. be for your team. What's that? Yeah, result. I love that results based. In other yes. words, you're taking actions every day to hit that result. Right. And the, okay. the only way that we, once we figure out what that result needs to be, then we look at what are the activities. Because we can't manage the result, but we can manage activities. So this is why we're so effective in the residential world is, I mean, we have nine appointments today. You guys are expected to close half. Now, that's a result. But what are the activities on closing those? And so we're going to manage those activities. On top of that, how can we get the referrals from there? How many referrals are we going to get today? And so these, these are the things that are set in place on a residential side. You just need to do it on the commercial side. And what is something that, you know, how can we win today? What do we need to do to win today? Something that is really going to open your eyes is when you sit down, and your mind's blank. Like, well, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do today. What, you know, how am I going to win today? I mean, I guaranteed to win because I don't have any expectations for today. You know, well, that's a problem in itself. You're not moving yourself forward. You're never getting today back. This is my problem on the weekends. My wife tries to calm me down, but like, 
if I have nothing going on, I got done with my, my, I mowed the lawn and I'm sitting there watching TV. I'm like, I know that I should be doing something else. And she goes, just relax, you know? And it's hard for, for any of us that are business owners to do this because you feel that if I don't do something that I'm losing today, that calendar day is gone as of midnight tonight. Love it. Manage the activities. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's great advice. And I'm taking a bunch of notes. I hope everyone else on the call is too. So let's talk and let's talk a bit about or dig into some of the things from the conference. One thing you had talked about was the importance of training the team. You, you mentioned that briefly. I'd like to dig into that a bit more as business owners. Now, a lot of the guys on the call this morning, the owner is the sales guy. Now, there's a few where the owner is loves applying the product. And so he has a sales guy. But as owners that want to add a sales guy or train someone in to take over that position, what are some things that they can focus on, you know, out of the gate? Like, what are some things to be aware of and think about when they, they're looking to put someone into that place? And I realize residential is going to be a little bit different than commercial, probably, but there's probably some principles that apply regardless. I'm going to show something to you here. Hopefully I can share my screen. I should be able to give you access if not. Yeah, if you can. I want to show you what we call our key competencies. Now, it's going to be different based on commercial versus retail, but you need to make your own key competencies for your business. And so this right here is mainly for residential but this is everything a sales rep needs to master and not just know, but master before they get out of, of training. And you look at this like, man, that's a lot. Well, this is why we have three weeks of training. Now, a majority of this is taught in one week. But if you look at it, it's read all notes, you know, find the house. This is all easy. But when you get into where do they park? how long before they have to get out of their car. So they have to get out of their car within 30 seconds. When they go up to the door, they got to know what to say, but we have to verify that we have 60 to 90 minutes. So we know that we have an environment for a presentation to take place. You know, are they going to take off their shoes and put booties on? You know, what's their entry and warm up statement? So inside of your organization, what is the process? What are the steps and what do they need to know? You can't train your reps until everything is mapped out. You can't say, you know what? I'm going to have you I'm going to have you just watch me today. That does absolutely monkey see monkey do is a loss leader. It will never work and you are going to have and, and I I I'm going to really hurt some nerve or, or hurt some feelings here that the person you hire will never be as good, you know, uh, any better than you. You know, it's like my kids. I want them to be better than me. I I I parent them up to be better than than I was or am, you know, I tell my son that every day and he's 23 years old, but uh, you know, it's, it's what do they need to know inside of that position to be the best salesperson, best production person, best admin that they can be. This is also everything you see here. When we say manage your activities, here they are. So this is our Bible, if you will, of what we do on a daily basis. It is, it's everything that's required. When we get down here to price presentation, it's how they're going to give price. It's all the objections for commercial. This may be more on the relationship building side. When we talk to some of these large, very large commercial companies, the number one thing that they will instruct you on and tell you where their success came from are their relationships. But they're not superficial relationships. These relationships, when you see a sales rep leave an organization, those people, just so you know, they're leaving with them because it's a relationship. That is the risk that you have to take when you bring on a sales rep. It's the relationship that they build. That's why you bring these 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 people on is to help them to build these relationships. I love that. That gives people a great idea. You know, there again, it comes back to managing activities, not just for yourself now, but also setting the activities that your sales reps can manage, teaching right. them what activities to manage. I really, really appreciate that. We have a couple more minutes before I'd like to, to shift over to some questions for okay. everyone on the call. Give them a chance to ask some questions. Rejections, which maybe this doesn't even come up if a sales rep is trained properly. 
the presentation properly, sets their expectations properly. How do you handle rejection? How do you and and again in commercial, it's going to be a couple different areas that can happen. One, of course, is door knocking. Another is in a sales present presentation, but usually that's more soft because it might be over the phone, break up over text or email. But is do you have any advice on rejections or having the proper mindset going into that situation? Well, first understand that you're never rejected unless they fire you. You know, then that's a rejection. But rejection is really nothing more than it's it's not a no, it's just not right now. And so we're always planting the seed. You know, when somebody says that, hey, we use somebody else, just know that at some point that somebody else is going to screw up. Hey, I'm sure you screwed up. We I've screwed up. You know, I've lost clients, you know, and someone else was there to pick up the pieces. So when your competitors, they mess up, you know, they they weren't there, they weren't, and they get too comfortable is the problem. They get too comfortable in the relationship and you're going to be the one that's there to pick up the pieces. You know, when we train, we do a lot of training for the shingle manufacturers and, and the suppliers on how that they should go out and get contractors. And the thing here is, is what, what we all want is support, but that support may not be the support you're thinking of. And so when somebody says, you know, I, uh, they don't want to work with us. No, they just don't want to work with you right now. They're happy currently with who they're using, but at some point that will change. There's always change, always change. There's change inside their organizations. You know, when somebody, when I find out that an organization is changing management, man, the alarms inside of your organization should go off, that something's happening over here. I want to be the person that picks up the pieces. I want to be that new CEO's best friend, whatever the case may be. I want to find out who they're bringing in and hopefully it's us. So, you know, it's be there when they need you. When they need you most, is when there's an emergency, I love, man, if you waste a good emergency, man, you, you've really done something horrible for your own organization. What I mean by this is when a, a potential client has an emergency, you need to be the hero. Everybody drops everything. We're going to be the hero. We're going to pick up those pieces. And now we just picked up a new client because we jumped in and did what we needed to that the other company couldn't do. But you can't do that unless you're, you, you, you have your pulse. You, you always know what's going on. If what you do is go in and find out they don't need you and like, okay, well, you know, they will never get that business. You've already lost. It's not, no, it's just not now. Some of the biggest clients, I mean, the fact that we work with the largest, we work with Power Home. The only reason why we work with Power Home is because Asher called me in the middle of a huge issue that they were having. And we literally put all our heads together inside of our own organization to figure out how could we, how can we take care of this mammoth organization. I mean, they just hit a billion dollars this year. And so, you know, to pick up something like that and we deal with all of their their managers, you know, their managers were like, "Hey, we need to deal more with this." The organization that dropped the ball, you mentioned them, was the Stephen Covey organization. They dropped the ball because they got too comfortable. So, and we all do it. Yeah. Just so you know, we all do it. Yeah. And yeah, the organization sure. doesn't feel the value that they once felt when they started with you. A couple of tips right there. We need to promote emergency response service on our websites and stuff. Go that or just free tip. let them know, hey, and we're very upfront. Hey, something's going to go wrong. We know it. Something's going to go wrong between you and, and who you're using right now. I want to be your first call. That's all I want from you. I'm not going to bug you. I'm not going to bring in donuts every week, you know, but I do want to be that first call. And here's what I will promise you. We will be Johnny on the spot. We're going to jump. We're going to get, and we're, we, that's our opportunity to show you what we can do. Now I'm going to give you the same advice that I gave my son. Don't screw it up. It's very simple advice. Just so you know. Yeah. Very good advice. <laughs> and so that reminds me this morning, I got, well, actually I saw a post of a friend that uses a software tool, a shopping cart or checkout software, and they're sending a cold email to another company's customer somehow, which there's a way to scrape a lot of that data. But their email, this email of this software company said, 
hey, this other company, so and so filed bankruptcy. If you guys have any problems, you know, we'd love to support you here. And the other company is a huge, huge company, but their their main company is filing bankruptcy, and they're taking advantage of that and saying, "Hey, we can help you." So, perfect example of what you just mentioned. Something that happened today. Yeah. Another one, one of the our group contractors in Ohio, a very large contractor in the coatings world, was building a relation with a client or a prospect of client for, I believe, it was eight years. And a couple of times he was like, he just, you know, he's not even going to call him anymore or, you know, just throw away his info, basically. Well, here, seven, eight years later, he got a huge job. I forget the square footage, but a huge project because he built this relation. He was there all this time, just being being available, offering to to help them. Yes. Well, our time is moving quickly. I'd like to open up for Q&A before we do that. I know, Chuck, you offered a pretty hefty discount for our organization here. And so if somebody has interest in that, reach out to me and I'll get you the info. But talk to us a little bit about Top Rep in Columbus. I was looking at the event back in the spring. And of course, with our conference going on, everything, it didn't work out for us. But We'd love to see a bunch of our guys there. So give us an overview in a minute or two, if you can, yeah. on that event in Columbus. So Top Rep is, it's an experience. And everybody that's come to it has mentioned how it's its life-changing, not only for them, but their teams. And what it is, is you're going to get the opportunity to go from start to finish of the entire sales process. You're going to go, we're going to go through mindset. We're bringing in some of the biggest mindset coaches in the country to not only talk, but to coach inside of this. We do limit this to 300 people just because we do want to keep it small enough that we can focus in on the people that do, that do come. And so you're going to go through every phase of the sale. But then your sales reps, and if you choose to go the sales rep route, we have a lot of owners that say, hey, I know you have a leadership route as well, but I want to I want to go through the, the sales leadership or the sales part of this. And so once we're done, you're going to get into groups and you're never going to get into the same group. You're always going to have different people you're sitting with and you're going to pitch them six different times throughout two days. They're going to pitch you. You're going to be pitched over 40 times. And so while you're sitting there, you get to watch these, these folks and they are beasts. They come in to compete because there is a competition involved. And some people come in to compete and some people come in to learn. It's totally up to you, but you're still going to, to pitch and they're going to pitch you. And you get the chance to see that the different levels of, of sales professionalism inside of this. And as you go through this, you'll go through just how to show up to a, an appointment how to do your a proper inspection, how to, to ask the right questions, all the way through the the uh, what they call the world famous closing roadmap that all the major organizations are using today. It's something that we've been working on over 20 years and have mastered that piece of it. But also the leaders go into a different room those six different times. And so you'll have the opportunity to meet with some of the biggest leaders in the country. We are actually going to teach you the ins and outs of the uh, results-based leadership. And you'll end up with so much content to go home with that it'll, it'll last you a year just going through the content that we give you. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a life-changing event. And yeah, it's going to be in Columbus at the Nationwide Convention Center, not Nationwide Arena, but the Nationwide Convention Center in Columbus, Ohio. And that's August 19 and 20. Is that correct? Yes. I believe that's the dates on it. Yeah. We gave you yeah. guys, and Owen will send it out, but there's a coupon code that you can use to get a really big discount because it's it's typically $9.99 to go. And, uh, you know, because we're we're looking for people that are serious about getting there and really wanting to learn. We don't want the the sales reps that just kind of sit in the back. And uh, when it's time to, to get in the groups, they go off, take phone calls. So, you know, you're going to see how serious these sales reps and these owners take it when you get there. Yeah. And for some of us, that would be a little bit of a stretch, you know, out of the comfort zone, but that's really where, where the magic happens. Many years ago, oh, 12, 12, 14 years ago, my wife and I went to an event. It was a leadership personal development group conference or event, and they actually got everyone, every single person 
got a turn to present. And this had to do with personal development. And it was a stretching experience, but it helped us realize, and we never forgot that experience, helped us realize the impact that we can have on other people. And so I'm, I'm sure a lot of that happens here where you come out of that and you have a new perspective and you the the biggest thing for me and some of us appreciate this more than others is having a roadmap you come out of there having a clear understanding of the actions you need to take not just you know for life but every day every day action so i love that we're going to open up for q and a chuck if somebody wants to get a hold of you what is the number one best way somebody could contact you or reach out to you and connect looks like we lost chuck there so we'll give him a moment to tune back for that coupon What's code you'll just reach out to me i can send that over by email or text all right chuck's coming back online sorry about that our whole service went down i don't know what happened i've never had that happen. Yeah, that's all right we had a power outage here this last week and actually electric uh pole real close to our house well 100 150 feet Blew an insulator, blew a fuse, and actually had part of an insulator hit our house, break a window, and then our power was gone for like eight hours. And our internet's been out since then. Well, I had this Starlink system sitting in a closet, so I pulled it out, and we're on Starlink satellite internet right now. So. All righty, so best contact method. What's the number one best way to get a hold of you, Chuck, if somebody wants to reach out and connect? To get a hold of me is Chuck at topreptraining.com chuck at topreptraining.com yeah that is the easiest way to get a hold of us and, and any of the uh, whether it be facebook messenger or linkedin messenger those work as well perfect love it all right let's open up for some questions if anyone has questions i know it's uh, we've jumped around a bit on topics but uh, it's been been uh, very worthwhile for me i got some ideas off of this today already inspired so any questions just open it up Thanks for following along this interview. To get inside access and the rest of this interview, including an exclusive Q&A session, join us at roofcoatingcontractor.com. Don't miss out on valuable insights from industry experts.